The Falcons Audible presented by AT&T is back with your trio. I'm Derek Rackley. This is Dave Archer and DJ Shockley. We're rocking the red and the black and a little bit of the gray, gray. but cool. we are in team issue. Yeah. Ready to give you the business <laughs> up in some, here. We need, we need some more team issue. That's what we need. Same, yeah, that's same. that's kind of like that Just gentle same. call out to a, a powers that be. Can we yeah. get some like Falcons audible gear up in here no, so same. we can look real, real professional? Old miles don't get fed. <laughs> Sammy. All right, we are uh, we are well into full swing of training camp. Uh, this 2024 Atlanta Falcons team is getting ready for their first preseason game coming up later this week. We will get to that. But, guys, how I wanted to start is this. We are just shy of, let's call it, two weeks of camp. So there's been plenty of resume built, if you will, so far in this 2024 preseason. So I wanted to get your guys' impression as media, as the analyst for the team. You've got, you guys have had a chance to watch the practices probably more than a lot of other people have. Arch, I'm going to start with you. General impressions of what you've seen on the field so far, maybe things that to be excited for and areas that still need to be addressed, knowing that we still have plenty of time left in, in the preseason, but things you're excited for, areas that still need to be addressed or answered. Okay, things things to be excited about. I think the versatility of this team, and we talked about that last week uh, when we got together, the versatility on both sides of the ball. Um, you, you shock, we've watched it real closely, and Jimmy Lake's got a lot of guys to play with on the defensive <laughs> side, especially in the front seven. Um, the same thing could be said for Zach Robinson on, on the offensive side of the football. Um, the contrast between Kyle Pitts and Drake London and then Ray Ray McLeod and maybe Rondell Moore or whoever, Kadero Hodge, whoever the other receivers are that are on the field, the contrast of size and, and, and wingspan mm -hmm. compared to quickness and speed. Yep, yep. And, and then the combination of the two running backs, you know, with, with Algier and Bijan Robinson. So that, that jumps off the tape at you. It jumps off at you when you watch practice. Just the versatility in different locations these guys are lining up in. I think the continuity along the offensive line, really excited about that. I thought, and we'll jump into a little bit of what happened on Friday night at yep. Mercedes-Benz Stadium. I thought both offensive lines played extremely well the other night, Shock. And, and I think that um, there's been an emphasis, and I was a little surprised. I mean, I wonder about you from you. A little bit of an emphasis in the run game. Mm -hmm. There's been a, they ran the ball a lot on Friday night, yeah. and again here early this week, get, get leading into the Miami practices at one practice here in Atlanta. Again, a run-oriented, heavy run-oriented deal. But so that's exciting. You're going to leave one of your bread and butter things yep. uh, in, yep. in the books. Um, some of the young guys, uh, a guy like JT Bertrand. Um, much further along than I thought he would okay, be. Okay. And, uh, and Braylon Trice as well. Okay, yeah. So there's a couple <clears> of <throat> young guys that potentially are getting themselves in position to contribute on the field. I got a follow up question for you. I'm going to get go, go back to you in a second, but I want to get your impressions on what you've seen so far, DJ. Uh, I think the number one thing I'll start with is the captain and leader of this team. Watching 9 7, he looks good. He looks like Love if it. you have any concern about is he going to come back slow from the knee? Is he going to maybe ease his way in? I've seen probably every practice I've been at, he's had an impact some cow, mm -hmm. some way when they got in the team drills or yep. whether it's, you know, one on ones, wherever it is. So put that aside. Nine seven is going to be ready to go. Grady <laughs> Jarrett will be ready to go. And I'm excited to have him back for sure. And I, I think the other thing that's been impressive to me is I think that that second level. You're talking about. We know what Nate Lamon did last year. You get Troy Anderson back, but you know who K. Nellis is. You brought him here for a reason. Mm -hmm. I think that 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 trio of inside linebackers is going to be special to watch. And we've seen Troy, we've seen Nate alternating in and out with the ones going back and forth. It's going to be fun to see how these guys, you know, I, I, I was talking about Jimmy Lake, baby, use all these guys in multiple ways. And Lamon still is a tackling machine. Yeah. But Troy yeah. is coming back into his own as well. Yeah. You're watching him run around and fly around to the football. So it's going to be fun to knowing that you have so much depth within your defensive line. Mm -hmm. Ours talked about the versatility you can have on offense. It's the same thing on the defense side. We were talking about before we came on about how many guys you can use in multiple ways. But I love the depth that you got there. Then that second level of dudes that are just going to be downhill and they're going to be physical, they're going to get after you. And it just bowls well for the entire defense. So – I think it's going to be interesting to see how all these different pieces match up, and that's why it's fun that we finally are at a week where you get to see these guys go against somebody else for one, but also yep. get in the game and see what it's like when it all comes together. You yeah, mentioned you, really cool, though, yeah. really cool, just to follow up on what Shock's saying, is there's two wild cards on defense, mm -hmm. okay? And the wild card, when you're playing, if you're playing cards and you get two wild cards that can be anything they want, you want them to be mm -hmm. aces, queens, they need to match them up. Mm -hmm. 
Caden Ellis and Troy Anderson yeah. are wild cards. Okay. Because you can play them all over the place. Uh-huh. They're they're either in the A gap, they're coming, they're dropping back, covering guys in in coverage. They're rocking up on the edge and coming off the edge. Mm-hmm. And so Jimmy Lake's got two guys that he can have an ace here, he can have a queen over here, whatever. <laughs> He's got a couple of cards that are really pretty special to watch. It, the speed, the athleticism, both those guys play with. Two wild cards on the defense. This defense is going to hunt as a pack, mm-hmm. yep. but those two guys are kind of the alphas within yeah. that pack, which yeah. is pretty cool. Well, and you're mentioning, it goes back to your point about versatility, first of all, but the other thing I wanted to follow up with you about, you talked about the trio of linebackers, but there's all and all of them basically return outside from Anderson's injury, but then there's a trio of safeties all back there that all yeah. three of them return. You guys have heard the old adage, right? It, 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 I think it, it holds true for football. It holds true for sports like softball and baseball. If you're strong up the middle, you generally got a pretty good chance. You talked about great coming back. Mm-hmm. You talked about the three linebackers. Mm-hmm. We've got three safeties came back, one of them being one of the best safeties in the National Football League last year. Everybody wants to talk about the corners on the edge. They generally yeah. get paid the most money. The pass rushers probably get paid the most money as well. But yet we're talking about how strong the defense is looking at this point up the middle. So that's encouraging. Arch, my follow-up to you was this. You're a quarterback. You guys are both quarterbacks. We've seen kind of over the last few years a certain kind of I'll call them pass catcher, receivers, big, physical, catch radius. But then you bring in this guy like Ray Ray McLeod. So I want to ask you, like, how different of an element do you feel like he is going to bring to this offense, maybe that we haven't seen in a few years, assuming that he ends up coming into that role that he's kind of been slated for right now? Yeah, I think it's a good point, Rack, in that you got a short area quickness guy that's got big speed, maybe long speed if he need, if he gets clean. This game is a point-to-point game. Yeah, you'd like to have explosives, but defenses are trying, nowadays are trying to make you put 10, 12 plays together. So how can I get explosives in a short area? So if I can get this guy to hand him the football or get him something short or get him on that shallow crossing route with the ability to make people miss, now all of a sudden a five- or seven-yard throw was a 15-yard play. It's an explosive. It's 20 yards. And so I think his ability to create that dynamic puts a little bit a lot more pressure defensively on okay we got Kyle and we got Drake they got two long receivers that are going to be 50-50 monsters and we can maybe try to double them well all of a sudden here comes this this smaller guy that has the ability to hand it off to him catch it whatever you need him to do I think that his potential as a punt returner first yeah. that's who he is yeah. all of a sudden you build a punt return within the offensive, offensive system yeah. And all of a sudden, this guy can create some monster plays for you in, in a pretty little little space. And I think Kurt's starting to develop a rapport yep. with a lot of guys. And we've heard about Pitts and all that kind of stuff. But Ray Ray's one of those guys that he's developing of an idea. The hardest part for a quarterback is to understand body language of players. And mm-hmm. I think that's where Kurt's made huge strides during the first 10 to 12 days of practice and it happened in OTAs as well, is understanding body language, shock. You know, mm-hmm. when a guy's going to come out of a break, can I get it out on yep. time? There's not a lot of separation in guys when you're throwing the football. But if you've got a guy that can give you that indicator with the ball coming out a little bit early yep. and you yep. can put it on him, Ray Ray's one of those guys. Yeah, the word the quarterback, and you guys know it, like you, you see a little wiggle. You see a little yep. lean to where only you guys know that that's yeah. when he's coming out the break, but it gives Kirk, a guy that throws off anticipation, that split second to know, now I'm going to start my throw, ball's coming out. Ray Ray probably hasn't even turned around yet, but as soon as he turns around, the ball's right there. And again, it goes back to that chemistry that they build up mm-hmm. in the offseason. So we've talked about the years past, you had the, the Mac Hollins of the world, the John U. Smiths of the world, all big body receivers. Maybe now you get a guy like Ray Ray McLeod that brings a different element to this offense this year that's maybe been missing a little bit. And I think the one thing that Arch mentioned that 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 kind of gives credence to why he can be so special is the thing that he is probably best at, you're talking about in punt return, a guy that understands space mm-hmm. and a guy who you want to get the ball to in space as a quarterback – I want to know that we're on the same page and we see the same thing with this particular space that we're throwing. If you're throwing, you're going on an option route or you got him somewhere in space and you know which way he's going to break. You got a, a, a defensive back or a linebacker head up on him and you don't know if he's going to break in or out, that could be an issue. You could hold on to the rock. But if you understand and the guy who is in that position understands where the most open space is, yeah, maybe he got him head up, but also he may have a robber on the inside. So you know you probably don't want to break inside. Mm-hmm. 
if he can think the same way as the quarterback, and I think Ray Ray, that's kind of guy because of what he's done his entire career, the way he's been able to be really good in space. Well, and this offense got a chance to showcase that a little bit more this past Friday when they opened up Mercedes-Benz Stadium to show the fans a little bit more. So before we get into X's and O's, DJ, I want to come back to you. Just talk about from being in the building what the energy was like because you just never know when you're coming off some subpar seasons what the excitement is going to be like during training camp at a session like that. But when before we came on the air, you said that the energy level was extremely high. Yeah, it was there, no doubt about it. And I think you could feel the excitement in the building. I had a chance to not only just – be kind of in it, but in between the fans, because I had to. I was doing a couple of hits here and there, and I had to walk through one of the concourses, and you could just feel the energy from the fans. People stopping you, and they asking you all these questions: What are we gonna look like? What about this guy, that guy? And you could see so many people excited about it. You could see every time a guy made a catch, it was a big deal. Yeah. The one time I heard Arch say, "You shall not pass." Before we said his name, people were already yelling and cheering because they knew exactly who that was. Just the the fact that there's so much new energy. Energy, I think, and so many people are excited about this team. They've seen Ross speak, the energy he brought when he, you know, spoke to the crowd. I mean, those are small things that gets this city going. And I think right now this city feels like we're going to be all right. We got some dudes in some really good spots that can make us a special team. And I think also having, you know, primetime games – it gives the fans something to think, well, maybe the league understands we we might be all right. <laughs> this might be a team that everybody wants to see. And for last two, three years, we've been wanting something like that. Yeah. And now you got it. Now you got a different feel. You got a, you got a lot of different new pieces. And I, I just love the fact that the fans were there. They were loud. They were into it. They were excited. I mean, they had the dirty burden that's gone. They had Big Tigger on the ones and twos. You had Arch <laughs> on the mic, you know, telling the fans what's going on so they understood it. It was just a cool environment to be in, especially when – all right, the first one was out at second year. Maybe that was probably for north part of Georgia. Yeah, now yeah. you get a chance to come into the city, into yep. Mercedes-Benz yep. Stadium, where people can get in there Friday night, bring their kids, and it, it, looked, it, just, it just felt like a good time. You know, Arch, DJ made a great point, and it's something that we talked about in the offseason, but I think that's something that probably stuck out um, at Mercedes-Benz Stadium is the Coach Raw factor. We always knew that he, this guy was – he could captivate a room. Mm-hmm. He's going to put that smile on and he's got your attention. And he's going to bring the energy and he's going to get the most out of the guys. And I don't want to disrespect Arthur Smith at all, but did you feel a different intensity maybe because of the man in charge running the team this year? Yeah, absolutely, Rack. And I, you, all those things you just said about him are, are very true. He, there, there's guys that have knacks to run routes. There's guys that have a knack to get that ball in there or read a play and come down, he'll make a play. There's also guys that have knacks to make people feel like they're included. Mm-hmm. He has this include, inclusive personality mm-hmm. where you feel like he, when he says we, he means that you in the stands have as much to, to maybe play in this thing as the guys on the field. Yep. And you feel like he, you feel that's the truth. And and I think that's what he's done the first couple of times he's had a chance to actually speak to the crowd. Speak, as as Shock talked about at second year high school, there was a really good speech there. And then he had another one uh, there in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And congratulations to all the fans that came out. I think we had some 15,000 fans that came out to Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Thank you for coming out and, and your donation to Emory Healthcare, which was really cool. Five dollars went to that great cause. But just to be there, it meant a lot to the players. I talked about that a little bit, um, the players – it meant a ton to, to feel that energy because we normally feel it out here and we haven't been able to do that because of construction. But Ra has that really weird sense of being able to feel like, you know, we're all – he wraps his arms around yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. And it's not just his guys, it's everybody in the crowd. And, and his ability – uh, to make you feel like, and, and it's true, this this team needs that energy from the stadium, and you could feel it the other night. All of us at some point in our career have played for a coach, and again, this could be Little League, this could be all the way up through your pro career, that somehow, some way, they, they're able to get a little bit more out of you. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm most interested to see because I think he has that ability to maybe get a little bit more out of every single player, not because – He's giving them something more from a coaching standpoint, but it's kind of just like the trust and that that it factor, if you will, that the players are like, I'm going to bat for that dude. Mm-hmm. However, whatever he wants me to do, I'm laying it on the line for that dude. And maybe that's what this organization needs to take it to the next level because everybody has X's and O's in the NFL. Not everybody has the same level of execution, but what teams have the it factor? Mm. 
Kansas City Chiefs have the it factor with their quarterback. The Patriots in their heyday had the it factor with their quarterback. You've got to find that. That's when you become special in the National Football League. So on the field, Arch, going back to Mercedes-Benz Stadium, what stuck out to you from Friday night? Yeah, it, I mentioned the two young guys. I thought JT Bertrand had a really good night on Friday night. He was around the football a number of times. Uh, Jimmy Lake has designed here early on in camp. You're not going to see him in the preseason games, I wouldn't think very much. But they're coming with some pressure looks, and that's where what Jacques was talking about, the value of that second level. This is a defense at the linebacker core, and we talked about it, I think, last week, that you went into thinking, okay, a guy coming off injury in, in Troy Anderson, uh, a young guy in J.T. Bertrand. Uh, you've got a guy that was an upstart. Can Nate Lamon match what he did a year ago? And then, of course, Caden Ellis. They all of a sudden become a, have become a strength. And Bertrand, uh, and I'm not saying he's going to start, but all of a sudden, from a depth standpoint, he's going to be a core special teams guy, but you feel pretty good about plugging the young guy in. Sure. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, here's this big, thick dude you drafted in the third round. <laughs> well, you talk about looking legs at this dude, massive, look, yeah. gigantic rear and huge <laughs> legs. Yeah. I didn't realize he was that big. But Braylon Trice yeah. is a problem. Yeah. The, our guys are having a really difficult time blocking him, and so – that's all of a sudden a bonus. You think, well, wait a minute, maybe he's going to be a little bit better off the edge and not just a piece than right. we thought. Right. Um, that was that initially jumped off the page at me, and then of course the offensive line play I thought was outstanding. Shock. Yeah. Their ability to come off the ball, which gives you a little bit of pause, because that second offensive line was blocking the interior of that Falcon defensive front a little bit too. Right. right. Now they were having problems with some of these pressure looks, so kind of give and take there. But those are the kind of things that jumped off the tape at me. Offensively, Kyle Pitts has been been outstanding so far. He looks like a different dude. Looks like the dude we saw at the beginning yeah. of his career. So that's cool. Um, Darnell Mooney's been pretty good as well. Yeah, and and DJ, there's been a lot of talk too. I don't want to like you know get you into a pigeonhole here, but like about. Kirk Cousins and Drake London and, and the connections that they've found throughout the course of the camp. And when when you draft a guy where you do in Drake London, you're waiting for him to kind of take over or take that step to show that he is that next level receiver. And maybe Kirk Cousins is the guy that's going to help get him there. Yeah, and I think we've seen more 50-50 balls he come down with mm. in this camp than anything. Mm -hmm. And I think the fact that you got a guy in Kirk who's going to give him opportunities. We've seen that in his career. He throws the football over the yard. He wants to spread it around, and the ball's coming out. But I love the fact that, especially in the red zone, he's giving these boys the high point balls that we talked about that gives them opportunity. I've seen probably, I don't know, three or four different plays where – he is in the end zone, in the red zone, he's coming down with it, and he's high-pointing the football, and it's guys trying to rake it through, trying to fight it out, and he's making yep. plays on it. Yep. So that connection is going to be huge. And I think you, you see what Drake is capable of, and you know what Kirk is capable of. This could be a dangerous combination with the fact that you bring back a healthy Kyle Pitts who is going to be all over the field. And then you're talking about in this scrimmage, and Arch mentioned it a few minutes ago, they still want to run the football. Mm -hmm. And you look up and they had probably three or four red zone periods and they were trying to run the football mm -hmm. in a situation where you think, okay, I got all these big body or I got all these shifty guys trying to get them in space and get them a football. No, nah, we're still going to turn around and hand the football over. And I think that goes back to what I talked about last week with Tyler Algier say, hey, man, it's going to look like it's going to be spread. You got dudes all over the place. He said, oh, don't let it fool you. We're going to turn around. We're going to run the rock too yeah. now. We're yeah. still going to be physical. Got you still to. got that offensive line that Archer's mentioned that's been here and done it, and we saw what they did last year. So you add that to it, man, it's going to be, I think, an interesting offense to have to prepare for because of all the, the different pieces you have around it. And Drake, going back to him one last time, I heard Terry talk about him say he's just one of the nicest guys you ever meet off the field. But there is an absolute switch when he gets onto the field, mm -hmm. and he expects every time the ball is his way, it's his. Got to have those guys. No doubt. I remember Keith Brooken was like that, too. You just <laughs> put the glasses on. You can have a, just a, a quiet conversation with him in the locker room. But when that dude got on the field. Maniac. Yeah. Maniac. <laughs> Might not have been a guy thrown out of practice more <laughs> right. than Keith Brookie. <laughs> right. <laughs> so speaking of Jeez. intense practices, yeah. perfect segue here. Is the Falcons are going to travel down to Miami for a couple of joint practices before they face off in a preseason game on Friday night. So, DJ, let me jump right back to you here. We had the scrimmage at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. They're yep. going against each other. So now yep. they're going to go against somebody else. Tell the average fan or somebody that does not know what happens in a joint practice, what the Falcons, as far as coaching staff, personnel, and the players are looking to get out of the next few days doing practices against the Dolphins. Well, I think the biggest thing that 
the coaches, the players, everybody wants to get done is you want to see your guys compete against somebody else. You want to see your guys go out and go against a guy they haven't seen for the last two weeks in practice and say, okay, I know I'm going up against Eddie Goldman. I know when it gets second and long, he likes to use this spin move. He likes to, you know, go over the top, whatever it is. But now I got this guy in front of me. I really don't know what his best move is. I don't know what he's about. And now you get a chance to critique a guy in front of somebody that they haven't seen. And then there's other opportunities where you can learn from, okay, if a guy gets beat, guess what? How's this guy going to respond now that he's not out of flowery and he knows that, okay, he was going against Drake London and they probably expected him to beat him. But this is another opportunity for you to go out and show Okay, in good instances or bad instances, how are you going to respond? So there's so much that the coaches can evaluate through mm-hmm. this process because, I mean, think about it. We're going to go see Jalen Waddle. You can go, go see Tyreek Hill. Uh, you got some guys who can go get it. You got some guys who can really, really force the issue. And now you look at some of these young DBs and say, how do you hold up? <laughs> how do you hold up when you know, all right, you don't know this guy's going to run a corner, he's going to run a slant, what are you going to do, and how are you? Because it's easy to get out here and know, oh, I've seen this formation four or five times. Exactly. I know exactly. they run this out of that, so yes. I can sit on these two or three routes. Now you're going to go see something totally different, <laughs> and you're not going to know what's coming, and then they're going to see, alright, are you falling back on your technique? Are you falling yes. back on the things that, that got you here? And now how do you respond in that kind of instance? These joint practices eliminate tendencies, oh, for sure. right? Because, especially with defensive players too, Shock, you remember this. I remember we, we'd scrimmage, act, go against each other for two weeks. You make an audible call, they know exactly know what what's is. going on. No doubt. They know where every receiver is going. <laughs> so it's now you can go and you can make maybe two or three audible calls before the opposing team actually <laughs> knows what's going to happen. Yeah. But what you talked about, and I want to lead you into this, Arch, is they're going to see a different style of offense coming at them with the Miami Dolphins. This might be the best test that Jimmy Lake, Raheem Morris get defensively for their guys because of the speed that they're yeah. likely going to see in the passing game. So, again, that's an area that I want you to address, but what else sticks out to you is super important this week against the Dolphins? Well, s- specifically about the offense, ironically enough, this offense is going to look a lot more like the offense they're playing in practice right now than the offense they saw last year. Yeah. Uh, Arthur Smith's offense, much more too tight end oriented and come off the ball and run it, play action. Whereas if you look at the two coaches, they come from the same background. So yep. now they've said they've got that kind of that Shanahan McVeigh background where you're going to see similar styles in trying to throw the ball. Now how they're doing it with the style of player they've got, yep. Waddle, Waddle <laughs> and, and Hill look a lot different than London and Pitts do, right? <laughs> so it's a, that's a little bit different there. Um, I think from a from the things they have to do when they get down there, to me. The one thing that I've noticed is we've had an inordinate amount, and especially here in the second week, an inordinate amount of pre-snap penalties. They've got to eliminate, they've got to clean some of that up. Yeah. Now, some of that comes with once you get into pads, there's that aggressive feel you want to come off the ball, whereas when you're not in pads, there's not that, you know, I'm going to hit this guy in the mouth or I'm going to dominate this guy physically. It's a little bit more, you know, by, you know, step here and do your techniques. Now you're trying to put the physical piece into it, and sometimes that gets you to jump the gun. Yep. There's a lot of yep. been there's been some pre-snap penalties and some post-snap penalties. We had a couple holding penalties on Friday night mm-hmm. that pulled a couple yep. plays back that were explo- explosives. That needs to get cleaned up. They need to. That's part of the polish you're hoping to look for. Now, will that happen? Because you're not probably going to have a lot of the main guy, guy line guys are going to play. Yep. So that leads me into the next piece as to what this is. We've got to trim the roster here at some point, guys. Mm. And this is a fairly talented team, I think, yep. uh, especially ones and twos. So which ones are the twos and threes are still in? But this is a great opportunity for them to step forward because they're going to get more reps, yep. especially in the game. Step forward and say, hey, let me make the team. Remember, DeMarco Hellams, who was a seventh-round draft pick last year, had a monster game against Miami yep. a year ago. Yep. So. And he ultimately ends up starting at the end of the season. Maybe even proved to the staff at that point, hey, I should be in the mix and yep. the rotation. I should yep. be on the field. Who is going to step up like that? Another part of the piece, and this is where I would come to you, Rack, and talk to you about, ask you, how important is it to get an idea? Because I think guys are still trying to feel out this kickoff rule yes. and lining up and all that kind of stuff. Yes. So. Not only body size and who's going to play in those positions, but how important is it from a technique standpoint? You've been doing it in practice kind of half speed. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to get a full speed opportunity 
And these joint practices, it's going to be a little bit more speed than, than oh, they want absolutely. it to be. And then when you get in the game. Yeah, I think it's a great point because I'll never forget when we went to up to Tennessee and scrimmaged the Titans that one of the first drills we did right off the jump was punt block against their punt block, to our, my, mm-hmm. our punt team against their punt block. And again, it, it's number one, it's ratcheted up because it's another opponent mm-hmm. and yeah. you ain't trying to get checked by somebody else when no you doubt. go practice against them, right? Yeah. Like you've got yeah. your best foot forward. Not to say you don't always have your best foot forward, but when you got another team coming in and guess what? This is punt block drill. Like, they got eight. They're coming after you trying to take the ball off the foot. Yeah. We got eight. We're trying to stop them, right? And it's and it's competition. It's mano y mano. And then once again, you're seeing looks that you didn't see in practice for the previous two weeks. So it goes back to the technique that you talked about. Even myself as a long snapper, I knew that when I was always going against these three guys that they put on the scout team in practice, I start to pick up their tendencies. Mm-hmm. Well, you go to Miami and you're going to see three, four, five different guys, and you don't know what they do. Yeah. You don't know if they're going to try to run over the top of you, if they're going to try to swim over you, if they're going to try to use speed and get around you. That's where he goes back to technique. you got to be good at what you do, what your scheme is, and what you're taught if you want to be successful. And at the end of the day, when it comes down to roster trimming, mm. that's what they're looking for, fellas. They want to see which guys can execute the technique yep. and the game plan that we've taught them in practice, no matter who is across them, as far as a jersey goes, right? You're not going to be playing against yourself on Sundays. You're going to be playing against another team. Yes, you have the ability to do scout team. you got to the ability to break down tape, and you're still going to know their tendencies and what they like to do, but you're going to see a completely different player yeah. every single week in the National Football League. Rack, this is such a change. I mean, we've seen rule changes where there's t- kicking the extra point from the 30 or mm-hmm. from the 25-yard line or yep. whatever. This is a radical change. Radical. Okay, so... <laughs> How? Give me an idea. Take me inside that room as to you know Marquise Williams and what are they thinking as far as you know? I guess there's kind of yeah, just on the fly, but tell yeah, me about think, what you know. about I think first of all, it's going to be they're going to need so many reps at this because it, you said it's the new kickoff rule is completely different than anything we've seen. It's there's going to be very little carryover to what you've done previously on this play of the game that you could say, oh, remember when we were doing this? <laughs> yeah. Like no, I don't remember, coach, because <laughs> yeah. it's never happened, right? <laughs> Like you got a guy kicking off from here, and then uh, quite a few yards removed, you got two lines of people that are standing here, and then back there you've got returners, and then there's a strategy behind where do you kick it, how do you field the ball, where do you want to start your next drive at. Like there's still things that, as an analyst, that I'm trying to figure out, right, right. like how you play in this. But that's another thing that I feel like this joint practice will be so good yeah. at because they're going to see different returners. They're going to have to go back to trying to find ways to block different people. How are you going to get around them? But I like what they're trying to do as far as bringing the kicking game and returners back into it. We've talked about this before. When we were playing, returners had a spot on the roster just because of that. And that has been eliminated over the last however many years. This is bringing that back into the fold to where now a really dynamic returner, just look at the guys that have gone into the Hall of Fame lately. Devin Hester made his career as a kickoff, as a returner. Right? He made his mark in the game as a returner. Now now you're going to start to see some of that back into the NFL game. How it gets utilized, I think we're still going to have to find this out. And I yeah, think, by the way, quit screwing around uh, the National Football League uh, Hall of Fame. <laughs> Put Billy White Shoes Johnson no in the Hall of Fame. That's just my – real quick there, I had to throw that in. <laughs> Billy White Shoes Johnson was doing it before anybody else was doing it. Put him yes. in the Hall of Fame. Big facts. He's on the 75th anniversary team. Damn it. Put, him on the, put him in. Sorry, go ahead, Hes, I mean, Hess said it too. Hess said it in his, in his, <laughs> in his speech, hey. Other guys need to be in here for yeah. sure. Uh, the one thing that I wanted to bring up was fans are not going to like this because this is the perfect opportunity. Another reason why these joint practices are so good because you get to work on the strategies of mm. something like this. That mm-hmm. you think about going into a game, they probably won't use it because they're thinking, okay, I got to take this to the regular season. So uh-huh. you may not see exactly how they want to kind of attack a kickoff or a kickoff return because they don't want to put that out there. But here's these joint practices. You get a chance to put certain guys in spots and say, okay, is this a place where this guy can make the football team? Mm-hmm. Can this guy go beat this guy one-on-one? Mm-hmm. Can he go split a double team within, with guys five yards away and go make a play? There's so many things that you can work on inside this particular joint practice that maybe you're not getting a chance to see in a live game because you're not putting out that kind of strategy. Similarly, we talk about an offense and defense. They don't want to show everything. Yep. Special teams is the same way because, as we talked about, this is going to be a big part of the game. 
And if one team can find a way to, okay, they get it out to the 35-yard line every time as opposed to the 20 or the 25, yeah. Yeah. we know 10 extra yards – and a drive starter is big, mm. so understanding big how deal. to how to how to master that part of it is going to be huge. And I think this is a perfect time to do it because you don't want to show everything, especially yeah. in the preseason game. Yeah, pay attention to it because I think if, if you're downplaying it, it's not going to play. And if you're not sure what it is, go look it up because we can't go through all the nuances. <laughs> but the kicker is the only one on the 35. Right. All the coverage guys are going to be land standing on the other team's 40 yard line. And then the receiving team has five guys that have to have their foot on the 35, or is it seven guys on the 35? They can put two between the 35 and the 30, and then they get two returners. If the And there's different rules if the ball rolls into the Correct. end zone, if it carries yep. into the end zone, all these kind of things. So what, what Rack was talking about, do I pooch kick it because – and are we going to run pick plays to get a guy clean? To run? It, there's so many nuances this thing. It's so radically different. Mm-hmm. Get ready. I mean, Rack's right. I mean, this is going to uh, be uh, this is going to be learning on the fly. Special teams coordinators are going to learn earn their salary this year <laughs> yeah. because this is an element that they're going to have to play, plan for that they've never had to before. They're going to, like you said, they're going to have to use different styles and strategies to try to get guys free and and go make plays and likewise to get people blocked to see if they can get back to. Get Getting back to some big returns in the National Football League. So all that stuff is going to happen uh, this week as the Falcons travel down to Miami as we record this podcast for some joint practices. And then we'll uh, conclude with a preseason game against the Dolphins Friday night, 7 p.m. down in Miami. Arch is going down Thursday. Thursday. DJ's going down. Thursday. And I'll be going down uh, my couch to watch it on my <laughs> phone, uh, my television. Uh, um, but we get finally competitive action. You can say what you want about preseason, but it's very important to the players, for sure. coaching staff, and personnel department because that's how it's going to determine who makes this football team and who you do see on opening day for the Atlanta Falcons. That's going to wrap it up here for the Falcons Audible Presented by AT&T, as always, my guy DJ, Arch, I'm Rack. We will see you the next time, hopefully wrapping up everything that happened down in Miami. Hope you enjoyed, everybody.